Hi everyone, welcome to this GCSE Higher Revision video. There's 45 days to go into your GCSE Higher exam, so keep up the good work, you're doing fantastically well. And today we're going to be focusing on the topic of the limits of accuracy. So it's a number topic, and we're going to be looking at questions involving things such as upper bounds, lower bounds, and things like that. If you've got the Court Marriage Revision card, card number 45 would be really useful for you as well. In this video, we're going to go through limits of accuracy. I'm going to include some questions for you to try, so remember to press pause and to try those questions yourself. So let's get started. Hi, today we're going to be looking at limits of accuracy. Now, we've looked previously at error intervals, so we've looked at upper bounds and lower bounds whenever we've looked at error intervals. Now, in this video, we're going to look at limits of accuracy, and we're going to go through three questions, and these three questions, feel free to pause them and to have a go yourself. So let's have a look at our first question. The first question says, the lengths of time taken by four people to complete a puzzle are listed below. So these are the four times, 28.4 seconds, 7.3 seconds, 37.5 seconds, and 10.3 seconds. And each of these times have been rounded to one decimal place. And the question says, work out the greatest possible range. So we want to find the greatest possible range. So feel free to press pause now to try this question yourself. Okay, so we're asked to find the greatest possible range. So remember the range is the biggest number take away the smallest number, or in this case, the longest time take away the shortest time. So in terms of the longest time, that would be 37.5 seconds, and the shortest time would be our 7.3 seconds. That's our longest time and our shortest time. And we want to find the greatest possible range. Now, obviously, each of these times have been given to one decimal place, so they've been rounded to one decimal place. So for these times, let's write down the upper bounds and the lower bounds. So we've got the upper bounds. So for the upper bound, we've got well, 7.3 seconds. So thinking back to our error intervals, the upper bound would be 7.35 seconds and the lower bound would be 7.25 seconds. And in terms of the longest possible time, 37.5 seconds, the upper bound, the upper bound would be 37.55 seconds and the lower bound would be 37.45 seconds. So we've got the upper bound and the lower bound for each of these times and we want to find the greatest possible range. So that means for the biggest number, we want to use the upper bound for that. So we're going to do 37.55. That's the greatest possible time because obviously we would use the upper bound for that one. And if we want the greatest possible range, remember, then we're going to take away and if we want the biggest possible answer, the greatest possible range, and then we would take away the lower bound for this time. So we take away 7.25, because that would give us the biggest possible answer. If we do the upper bound, take away the lower bound, that would give us the biggest possible range. If we wanted to find the smallest possible range, we would do the lower bound, take away the upper bound, we would take away these two. But in this case, we want to find the greatest possible range, so we're going to take away these two. So we're going to do 37.55, take away 7.25, and that's equal to... 30.3, so 30.3 seconds. So the answer is 30.3 seconds, and if you got that, well done. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So our next question says, Natalie runs 100 meters to the nearest 10 meters, and it takes her 12 seconds to the nearest second. Work out the upper bound for her speed. So feel free to press pause now to try this question. Okay, so in terms of this question, I'm going to start by finding the lower bound and upper bound for the distance ran, and likewise the lower bound and the upper bound for the time taken. So let's find the lower bound and upper bound for the distance to begin with. So she runs 100 metres to the nearest 10 metres. So the lower bound would be 95 metres, and the upper bound would be 105 metres. That's the lower bound and the upper bound for the distance ran. Now in terms of the time taken, it's 12 seconds to the nearest second, so the lower bound for the time taken will be 11.5 seconds, and the upper bound for the time taken will be 12.5 seconds. So we'll find the lower bound and the upper bound for the distance ran, and we'll find the lower bound and the upper bound for the time taken. So remember, speed is found by doing distance divided by time. So if we want to work out her speed, we're going to do the distance divided by the time. And we want to find the upper bound for her speed. That means it's her greatest possible speed. So we want to find the greatest possible speed. That would be the greatest distance in the lowest time. So if we do speed is equal to, the greatest distance would be 105 meters. And if we divide that by the lowest time taken, which would be 11.5 seconds, then that would be her greatest possible speed. It would be the upper bound for her speed. So if we do 105 divided by 11.5, that would be equal to 9.13043 and so on meters per second. So that's the upper bound for her speed, 9.13043 and so on meters per second. And that's it. So if we want to find the upper bound for Natalie's speed, we do the greatest distance in the smallest time. And if we do 105 divided by 11.5, that gives us the upper bound for her speed. If we were asked for the lower bound for her speed, we would do the smallest distance in the longest time. So you do 95 divided by 12.5. Five, and that'll give you a speed lower than that. It'll be a, obviously a slower speed. That'll be the lower bound for our speed. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at one last question. So we've got W equals the square root of C over X minus one. And we've got the C is equal to nine rounded to one significant figure. And X is equal to 5.24 rounded to two decimal places. And we've been asked to work out the lower bound for W. So we want to find the lower bound for W. And feel free to press pause and try this question yourself. 
Okay, so let's start off by looking at what information we were given. We we're given that C is 9 rounded to one significant figure. So let's find the lower bound and the upper bound for C to begin with. So in terms of the lower bound and upper bound, it's rounded to be 9 to one significant figure. So the lower bound would be 8.5 and the upper bound would be 9.5 because that would be the lower bound for C and the upper bound for C. And let's just write C there so we know that we're talking about C in, term in terms of the lower bound and upper bound. And in terms of X, let's have a look at X. X is equal to 5.24 rounded to two decimal places. So the lower bound for X would be equal to 5.235 and the upper bound for x would be equal to 5.245 so that's the lower bound and the upper bound for x now we want to find the lower bound for w so we want to find the lowest possible value for w so we want to find the lowest possible value for w because this is the division we want to do the lowest value on the numerator and the biggest number on the denominator so if we want to find the lower bound for w so the lower bound for w what we would do is we want to find the smallest possible numerator so that's going to be the square root of and then in terms of c we've got a choice of 8.5 or 9.5 so we're going to use 8.5 that's going to give us the smallest possible numerator and we're going to divide that by the greatest possible denominator so we're going to use 5 0.245 and take away one and that'll give us the smallest possible numerator and the greatest possible denominator and when we work this out that'll give us our lower bound for w so let's do that and when we do that we get that's equal to 0 0.68680243333 and so on and that's it and that would be the lower bound for w and that's it and if you got that well done so in this video we've gone through three limits of accuracy type questions i highly recommend having a look at the practice questions today because on the court maps practice questions will be loads of different limits of accuracy questions and it's a topic where obviously the context may change slightly and so on so it'd be very useful to have a look at those practice questions today so that's it in this video we've looked at limits of accuracy so we've looked at various questions and it's one of those topics where i'd highly recommend you look at the practice questions because in terms of the situation of the context they can change slightly in this topic so if you look at the practice questions, it'll just give you more experience of track attack on these questions in a range of situations. So I really hope you found this video useful. Uh, there's 45 days to go to your GCSE exam, so keep up the hard work, you're doing fantastically well. Remember, the next video will be out tomorrow at 3 o'clock on YouTube. So uh, see you tomorrow. Cheers. Bye.